Hey everybody, it's Robert Scoville. Hey, I just thought I would take a few minutes and uh, throw together a few videos for you guys uh, with regard to parallel compression and delay compensation, or you know, the concept of kind of getting those two parallel sources in phase with one another. Now, uh, you guys that work on digital consoles regularly, especially you guys that came from analog, you kind of get the beast, right? I mean, you understand the challenges that come with that. Uh, but I thought I would, might give you a few different ways to try to do it, uh, way, a few different ways to handle it today uh, and try to clear up some of the mystery surrounding it. And I, believe me, I know the mystery is out there because um, honestly, my, my email box fills up once a week uh, with people asking me for ways to do this, the best ways to manage it, uh, the best ways to figure it out. All right, so uh, that's the goal of this video series. Uh, I'm gonna, it's probably gonna be about four or five little segments here. Uh, I will release it all as one video. Uh, I will also post it up as the different chapters if you kind of want to get through it quickly, etc. Uh, and uh, just another note, you know, I will be using uh, pink noise to kind of demonstrate this today. I'm not going to use actual drum sources or guitar or vocal sources. Uh, I'm going to use pink noise in kind of a simulated fashion just simply because it's easier to hear when the things are out of phase and it's also easier to show it on FFT, which I will be doing today. I'll, and a matter of fact, I'm gonna show it on two different FFTs. Uh, and it really is just to show you that you can use any FFT to do this, but I'm gonna use uh, the Flux Pure Analyzer and I'm also gonna use Rational Acoustic Smart. Uh, I'll have them listed on the video uh, list if you wanna watch either one of those in play, whichever one you may be using, whatever, okay? Uh, so like I said, uh, it's going to be, uh, we're going to be using pink noise, etc. I'm going to be showing you a number of different ways to parallel compress uh, and should be a lot of fun. Hopefully, hopefully this will clear up a lot of the, a uh, lot of the mystery for you. Okay. All right. We'll see you in just a bit. Let's get started. All right. All right. We'll see you. All right, everybody, let's get it going here. Um, this first one that I'm going to talk to you about, uh, this first scenario is a setting where we have a set of inputs, you know, more often than not, I probably see drums in this situation, where we're gonna pick all of the drum kit and send it to the left, right uh, bus. But we're gonna kind of cherry pick some drums out of that, probably kicks and air and toms more often than, it, uh, than not is what I see. And we're gonna assign that to a subgroup. And that subgroup we're gonna process with some compression and some equalization, maybe some ta tape saturation, uh, some other harmonic stuff. And then we're going to add that back into those original signals by assigning it to the left-right group as well. All right. So you guys that get digital consoles, you understand that those are two different path links, right? I have one set of inputs that's going directly to the left-right bus, another that are going through the group, which is also going to the left-right bus. And there's going to be a time discontinuity between those two uh, paths, right? And when we try to add them together, they're going to comb filter. They're going to sound really terrible. Uh, so, you know, what we want to do is be able to get those two signals back in alignment. Now, luckily for us, this scenario uh, has been around since the earliest days of Venue. This was one of the earliest uh, parallel compression schemes that we did on Venue. And we kind of leveraged the fact that uh, Venue offered some limited delay compensation. It, it offered delay compensation that would look for offsets in those paths in the output stage and be able to compensate it automatically for them, right? Uh, and really, of all the ones I'm going to show you today, this is probably the one that leans on automatic delay compensation the most. All right. So let's uh, let me just quickly take you around the screens here. Uh, up in the upper left hand uh, corner is the talking head. Obviously, that's me. To the right of that, you'll see the venue screen for the console I'm working on today. Directly below that on the lower right, you'll see uh, an overhead shot of S3LX. That's what I'm going to be showing you this on today. And in the left lower left hand corner, you're going to see either the flux pure analyzer software or the smart software, depending on which one you watched, okay? All right, so let's get down to it here. So the first thing that we gotta do is actually pick our assignments. We wanna uh, take our assignments and uh, send those to the places that we wanna go. So I'm gonna just uh, take you through our inputs here real quick. Uh, I've got a just a basic drum kit set up here. I've got kick, snare, hat, rack, rack, floor tom, ride cymbal, and overhead. So just the simplest of kits, right? So um, we're gonna take and assign those out. Uh, so I'm gonna just gonna use multi-select to do that. So I'm gonna select the kick drum and then multi-select all of the drum kit here. And uh, I'm gonna send it to directly to the left right bus. So there we go. That should be all done to the left right bus now. If we check ourselves and sure enough. 
And then on top of that, what we're going to do is assign a set of inputs to a subgroup, right? So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to kind of cherry pick that into the kick, snare, and toms. Uh, so I've got my kick selected again. I'm going to select the snare and the three tom toms. And now I'm going to assign those to group one. All right. Now it's important to note, right, that we have to go to that subgroup as well and assign it to the left right bus as well. Now I just have this labeled spank. You can label it anything you want. This is just kind of a common term that I use all the time to dictate. Uh, or indicate that I'm doing parallel compression, right? So we want to take that group and we also want to assign it to the left, right as well. Now, as I kind of mentioned in the opening, I'm going to use pink noise in these channels just so that we can clearly hear what's going on and we can clearly see what's going on uh, in the FFT, okay? So uh, with that in mind, let me go patch in some noise. Let's go to patch bay here. Uh, we'll get to our inputs and I'm just going to uh, patch the onboard oscillator into all those channels. And then we'll go to miscellaneous and turn it on. And you should see some noise down in these channels now. Uh, again, we're just kind of simulating what's going on here uh, just so we can hear it. All right. And now I'm going to turn on uh, the noise and you should hear it comb filtering terribly. Uh, and that is uh, because we don't have any automatic delay compensation on as I just revealed to you there. So uh, let's just turn some noise on. And we've got to turn our subgroup on. And once I turn this on, you'll hear how dramatic uh, the, the cancellations can be. So you can hear it's definitely canceling there. If you were looking at the flux screen, you can actually see this in the summed response on the RTA now. It's that dramatic all the way down you know, underneath 2K there. So lots of cancellation going on there. All right, so how do we, how do we compensate for this? Well, uh, like I said earlier, venue consoles have some automatic delay compensation built in. We just have to turn it on in the appropriate way. So I'm going to go to um, Options Pickoffs, and you can see up in the upper right-hand corner of the window here that delay compensation is off. And we have two choices here for us, right? We have uh, Mix Only, which will deal only with the mix bus itself, or you have Mix Plus Inserts, which when we put plug-in processing, etc., on there, it'll account for that offset as well and automatically realign it, okay? So I don't, we haven't put any processing on the group or anything yet. We've just got the difference in path lengths of those two bus assignments. So uh, what we need to do now really is get our FFT assigned so that we can actually see these two things in action, right? And what we're gonna, the beautiful kind of thing about using FFT in these console situations like this is to some degree, you really don't even care which one is the measurement and which one is the reference, right? I mean, it's electronic measurement here. Uh, if you wanna be kind of geeky about it, okay, go ahead and make the shortest time always uh, the reference and then measure out from that. But really, we're just looking for offset here and looking for to, to ensure that we've solved the problem, okay? So the way we're going to do that here is I, I have the FFT just right across the left right bus. Uh, and you can see that there, it's, even though we can hear comb filtering there, it's showing that there's no cancellation. And that's because both signals are in both sides of the FFT right now. We need to split them out. So we need to get the, bus, the signals that are going to the left right bus in one side. We need to get, get the signals that are going to the group in the other side and then look at these two signals. And I'm, I'm just gonna simply do that with the pan knob, all right? So let's get back to our inputs here. And again, I'm gonna multi-select and I'm just gonna take all of our inputs and I'm gonna pan them all the way left. So pan, and you should hear that uh, noise move over a little bit. Uh, now what we're gonna do is go to the subgroup and I'm gonna take that subgroup and actually uh, make it mono. It's a stereo subgroup right now. So I'll make it mono and I'm going to pan it to the other side. All right. And voila, on the FFT, you see those two signals now and it's comparing them and saying, hey, one's arriving at a very different time to the other one. Okay. So that's what we need to solve for. And this will be a common theme going through for the rest of these little scenarios. We're going to do a very, very similar process. Okay. So let's go back to our options page now and Again, we don't have any processing installed. Let's just put in delay compensation, automatic delay compensation on the mix bus only. And you should see it cleaning right up. Yeah, certainly there goes our phase response back to flat, indicating no time offset. All right, but we're going to process that group. So let's go to plugins. Let's insert a plugin right across that group. We'll start with a compressor. We're going to compress first. So we'll put our old buddy Smack on there. And then we're going to put on an equalizer. We'll go down to my favorite Pultec there. 
And we're just going to insert these right on the group. And if you kind of do this in order, then it'll actually uh, dictate the signal order as well. And there we go. And I even hear the comb filtering in the background. So yeah, you should start seeing the comb filtering come back into play there. So obviously we got to go back to our options now and uh, pick offs and include the inserts in the ADC. So as soon as we include inserts in there now, voila, there it goes back in time. I'm going to take the panning out so you can so we can kind of bounce back and forth and clearly hear these things. So let me get in here and take our panning back out. I'll default all this. So there's our center on the inputs. I'm going to go back to the output here. And we're going to default that as well. And as you can hear, there's no cone filtering on it. We have them perfectly in time. And if you want proof positive of that, let's go back to options and take the delay compensation off. And now you hear all the cone filtering. Okay, tons of it. And now put the mix inserts back on. All right, so that's the first scenario I'm going to take you through. That's a very simple one. There are some downsides to it. There's some challenges with it. One of the biggest challenges I found with this method early on, uh, certainly compared to how we used to do it in analog, is that it's hard to uh, kind of realize or kind of recognize how much contribution each is giving to the left-right bus, meaning I've got the inputs here that are uncompressed. I've got the subgroup that I'm adding with it that's compressed. I really don't have any sense because I can't meter them independently of how much of each of them is going to the left, right. And then it has the added challenge of, as I turn down inputs, it's actually changing my threshold on the compression that's on the group. So it can get a little, you know, it can kind of jerk you around a little bit, getting your gain structure and your balance set up right for those two sources. So it kind of pushed me to do some other uh, styles of uh, parallel compression, et cetera. We're going to move into that uh, next. Uh, so look for the next little... Uh, a uh, little video here, and we'll cover another way to do this on venue consoles. All right. We'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Come, let me reset, and we'll get ready for the next one. All right. Okay, so we're back uh, for our second little scenario here with, regarding uh, parallel compression and making sure our parallel paths are in alignment uh, in, in terms of phase response. Uh, so the next one I'm going to describe for you is kind of an offshoot of the first one I showed you, but this one is actually going to take advantage of using two subgroups. Um, so in this scenario, we're going to take all of our drums and we're going to kind of divide it up between two subgroups, uh, one carrying the drums that we want to kind of cherry pick, meaning kick, snare, toms, and compress, and EQ, and tape saturate those, and add those back into the group set uh, that is all the drums, all right? So what you end up with is two drums, or two groups essentially, one with all drums, and then one with your compressed set. And we wanna make sure that those two things are in alignment before we send them to the left-right bus. Now, uh, it's probably the, as good a time as any to point out that uh, even though venue consoles have some automatic delay compensation, you have to remember what that delay, the delay compensation is looking for. It's looking for inputs that are assigned to the left-right and inputs that are assigned to a group that is also assigned to the left-right. In this scenario, we're not going to have any of these inputs in these groups that are assigned directly to the left-right. There's only going to be two groups that carry the two inputs. So the automatic delay compensation is not really going to work on its own there. Uh, and I'm actually going to show you a little trick today for actually kind of tricking the delay compensation into working. All right, so uh, we'll cover that here. Uh, so let's kind of get to, get right down to it. We have our same drum kit that we have uh, we had set up previously. Uh, I'm going to go in on the show file again and turn on the noise. Uh, it's worth noting right now that I have delay compensation off since you can see it on the screen. I'll take advantage of that being there. Uh, so I'm going to go to my patch bay and patch in my noise again. And now go to miscellaneous and turn it on. Turn it on. All right, so you see your uh, signals coming into the drums there again. So once again, we're going to have to go through an assignment procedure. All right, we're going to want to assign these to the appropriate output. So again, I'm going to use multi-select. I'm going to select my kick. And, and this time, I'm going to select all of the drums. Uh, you know, kick all the way through overheads. And we're going to assign that directly to the, uh, group one. And then we're going to cherry pick out of that. So I'm going to cancel out of that and then re... Um, 
multi-select here, I'm going to pick kick, snare, and toms and assign that to group two. Okay. So once again, I'm going to select kick and then multi-select the toms and the snare to go along with it. And we're going to send that to group two. So group one and two are going to be our two groups that we want to add together here. So we've got our inputs assigned. Let's go to the group now and take a look at those two groups. Uh, get over to that page here so that you see them in blue here on the screen. I've got one group that's called All Drums, and it is, is indeed All Drums. You can see that up in the members list on the right-hand side that it is All Drums. And then the second one, again, I'm calling Spanked, or you know you can call it whatever you want to call it, but it's just something that indicates to you that that's the compressed set. And you can see in the members list there that it's only Kick, Snare, Rack Tom 1 and 2, and the Floor Tom. Okay? So as it sits right now, if we were to turn on the noise, uh, it would be going nowhere because we have to get these groups assigned to the left, right. So let's assign them to the left, right. I'm going to take and assign both groups. And now if we turn on some inputs uh, with our noise, what we should hear is comb filtering because remember, the ADC does not recognize the duplicate path here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and go to our groups here. And right now, you can hear that it's actually in phase. We can see that it's in phase. And it's because all of the inputs are actually going to the group, two groups, and there's no additional processing on them to offset them in terms of time, right? So they are in phase. Uh, we can kind of see that in the noise on flux. Uh, the way we're going to verify that today uh, in this scenario is actually take these two groups and pan them out left and right. Remember, our FFT is attached right to the left right right now. So let's do that real quick. Uh, so I'm going to select group one and I'm going to pan it all the way left. I'm going to make it mono again. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to pan it right and make it mono as well. And remember, as I said earlier, it really doesn't matter here which group is the reference or which, or, you know, which input is the reference and which is the measure on your FFT. We're just looking for difference in phase and then we're going to hopefully take care of that difference. All right. So we've got it split out. You can still see the phase response is still flat. Uh, our frequency response is still good. But now it's time to just go add some processing uh, to our spank group. So I'm going to select that one. Let's go to plugins. Again, I'm going to use smack again. Let's go to the dynamics here and pull in smack. Again, I'm going to use an EQ. I'll use my favorite EQ P1A. And again, we're just going to insert this on the second group. We're going to insert it on the group labeled spank and already you can hear the comb filtering start to gather all right so there's our two inserts you can see the comb filtering in place there so there is an offset between those two right now which we need to account for we need to get it realigned all right so just to prove the point i'm going to go back to options and back to buses or i mean pickoffs excuse me and i'm going to turn on the delay compensation and you'll notice that no change happens in our time disparity there, right? The automatic delay compensation is not recognizing it. Now here's where we're going to learn how to kind of trick it into play here. And the way we're going to do this is, remember, uh, what venue is looking for is an input that is assigned both to the, directly to the left right and to a group that is also assigned to the left right. So what we're going to do is we're going to burn a channel. We're going to give up a channel, a channel that will never have signal into it. Uh, I typically use an effects return for this, so I'm going to go to an effects return here. And you can see I got a, a, a channel pre-labeled forced align, right? And all we're going to do with this channel, it's never even going to have its fader up. It's never going to get signal. But what we're going to do is assign it directly to the left, right, and also assign it to those two groups and turn our delay compensation on. And now you can see that it flattens right out, right? We've got that. We've met the criteria for the ADC to work which is that input assigned to both paths, right? Meaning the groups and the left right. Okay, so we've got everything back in phase again now. Everything's looking good. Now, let's talk about uh, a couple of the caveats associated with even this workflow. And that, is, and that is primarily this. If you're using this, especially on venue, it's important to understand that this alignment that is taking place is happening well after the group stage. So if you were to simply just go in an AFL those groups together, meaning listening to both groups at the same time in your headphones, you would still hear the comb filtering even though it's not comb filtering at the left right bus. That's been taken care of a little farther downstream. So don't get fooled into thinking that you need to 
be able to hear that at the AFL, it, it doesn't take place there, even though it's happening farther downstream. Okay, so don't get fooled there. Now, the big positive for me with doing this particular style of parallel compression is that you have really good control and really good access to see how much each one of these groups is, is uh, contributing to your left-right mix, and you can balance it very, very easily. You can see it on the metering. You can see it on the output metering, how much each one is contributing to the left-right. And uh, this becomes really important because you, know, you, you want to be able to balance it. You want to be able to see it. Uh, on the output and make sure that it's it's doing it accordingly. So uh, I'm going to go back and recenter those now. So we'll just default these back into place on both groups. So now both of your groups are going to the left, right, and you are off to the races there. Okay. So again, really good solid workflow. Uh, I've used this one for a really really long time. Uh, there are some other challenges associated with it, especially when we start talking about how do we effects process. Uh, uncompressed and compressed uh, drums and things like that as well, which I'm going to cover a little bit farther down the line in another little vignette here, okay? But that covers it for that one. Hope you enjoy that one. Make good use of it. It works really, really great. I used that one for many, many years. Let's move on to the next one. I'll show you another one that's even a little slicker than that one, okay? Back to you in a few minutes. We're going to reset and get, get ready for the next one, okay? All right, so let's get on to our next uh, scenario. Now, this one um, is kind of cool. I, I've actually found myself gravitating toward using this one quite a bit when I do this kind of work. Uh, this one involves using a single auxiliary into a, a pair of stereo returns, a, a stereo auxiliary into a pair of stereo returns. And it keeps everything nice and compact up on the input layer. It opens up additional subgroups if we only want to use a single subgroup for our drums, etc., or we can assign it all to the the left right bus okay so uh the thing to note about this one though is that it requires requires manual delay compensation um we can't rely on the adc in any way here it will not recognize the offset in these paths and take care of it we need to do that manually okay so uh let's jump right to it let's uh, let's talk first about what we got going on here obviously we're going to have some noise coming in let's get that going Patch that to our drum channels, our simulated drum channels. Turn it on. Okay, there's our noise coming in. Uh, so obviously we've got to find some way to uh, create a send and return path here. Uh, and we really want to do this without using hardware. We don't want to rely on going outside the console, making a hard patch, and returning it back. And honestly, this is where the plugin architecture really, really shines for this kind of thing. We're actually gonna use a pair of plugins to create a bridge between an auxiliary output and a pair of returns. We're just gonna insert a plugin in that path to create the path. And the coolest thing about that is obviously it travels with your show file. You know, you don't have to worry about carrying extra cables, any of that kind of nonsense. So uh, let's go to the plugin architecture and we'll do that. Um, we're gonna take and use our uh, time adjuster plugin again for this. So I've, I've got a stereo one there. I'm just gonna bring it down and copy it there. Whoops, let's copy it back up there. And then we're gonna drive that from a stereo aux output. I've already got one assigned and labeled named parallel drive. So we're gonna choose that and we're gonna choose that same aux for both plugins, right? So we got a, a single aux driving two plugins, but we're gonna return them to different locations. So I'm gonna return my first one to this channel that's called Kick, Snare, and Toms, and the second one to this channel called Spanked, okay, or Spank. So now we have that auxiliary returning to two stereo inputs, and we have that available to us now. Now let's talk about assignment here. Um, this is going to get this is where it gets a little tricky, a little dicey. You got to make sure you get your head around it because it can get a little a little geeky at times. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the the drums that we want to process, meaning the kick, snare, and the toms, the ones we've cherry picked out, and we're going to push those up into an auxiliary and return it to two places here on the console. Now that also means we're not going to assign those five inputs anywhere. They're just going to go up into that bus and down into these auxes. Now the remaining drums, meaning the hi-hat, the ride cymbal, and the overheads, those are going to assign directly to your master bus, whether it's a subgroup assigned to the master or it's directly to the master, okay? The key to that is 
You want to take those three extra inputs, the hat, the hat, the right, and the overhead, and make sure and assign those to the same master bus that you assign these two returns, okay? So those all five of those into a, a subgroup or all five to the master bus. Don't inter, inter, interweave it there, so to speak. All right, so let's do that assignment now. Um, I'm going to multi-select again, and I'm going to take kick, snare, toms, and go to an to that parallel drive aux and choose it. And I'm literally just gonna turn those channels on in the aux and go ahead and turn them up to zero. So now I have that assignment done all the way to those two auxes. Now, the kind of the cool thing about this workflow is we can kind of pick and choose now what we want to be part of that, that drum compression. And we can also change the blend to it. If we wanna make it kick heavy uh, to the compression set, we can do that. Or if we wanna make it snare heavy, we can do that and just deal with those balances accordingly. This, this is probably the closest thing we have in the digital world to the old way of doing it in analog, uh, where we didn't have to worry about any of these time discrepancies. Okay, so we've got our kick snare and toms coming into our two returns. Uh, we're gonna take our other channels, our hi-hat, and, and I, I do this all at once just so I make sure and get it right. Hi-hat, ride cymbal, overhead, and these two returns and we're going to assign those directly to the left right bus okay so now we should have our path and assignment complete so as i start to turn on uh, signals here i'll turn on the kick and snare just for our purposes here maybe eh, i'll go ahead and throw the time too. Uh, now we should see information at our left right bus you should be hearing that and i'm sure you do. yeah i can see it on the on the analyzer okay so you can see it on the RTA display now, right? You don't see any comb filtering in that combined display. You don't see any comb filtering in the phase trace simply because these two inputs both are at the same time, but they are also going to both the left and the right output on the console, right? And our left and right is feeding the reference and the measurement in the FFT. So we've got to split those things out so that the FFT can actually compare the arrival time of the two different sources. So again, we're going to do that with the pan bus. So I'm going to take my early arriving one and I'm going to select pan and I'm just going to pan it to one side. You can do the spanked to the other and you should start, well actually you, at this point you won't see any difference in the phase trace because these are two, the, uh, these are working in exactly the same time domain. We haven't put any additional processing on it yet, right? Now the, here's, where, here's the part that's really cool in my opinion uh, with regard to doing this on the venue consoles and, and you know, however you want to do it is that if we wanted to, we wouldn't necessarily have to use plug-in processing to achieve the parallel compression here. We could just use uh, the compression that's on the actual channel strip, right? And the equalization for that matter. We got broadband equalization available to us there, so we could do that there. But if we want to put other things like tape saturation and specialized compression or specialized EQ, then obviously we have to do that in the plug-in architecture. And that's going to require the manual compensation. So let's go to plugins and let's put on our plugins here. We'll start again with our uh, compressor. Oops. Enderitis there. There's our smack. We're going to go to our stereo EQP1A. And we're going to insert this right on the Spanx channel. Right. On the Spanx. Right. And as you can see, the comb filtering is showing up right away because of the offset that's imparted there. So here's where it gets kind of fun uh, because. You know, on your FFT, you can see the differences, and now the question is, well, how much delay do I put on it now to get these things to be in alignment? Well, you can just start adding delay uh, to that first channel, which is the early arriving one, right? That's the one we want to delay. We can just start adding delay to that till it lines up, or we can we could run a delay locator on the FFT program if it goes down to sample resolution. On Venue, we give you a really easy way to, to assess this time, and if you just go up in the upper right-hand corner of the inputs window, and right click on that area, it will show you the delay in samples that's being uh, imparted by those plugins on the channel. So as you can see, it's 28 samples. We're gonna go back to our uh, time adjuster that is on uh, the early arriving channel. And keep in mind here, this plugin has four samples of base delay in it, all right? So it would be 28 samples above that four samples. So we're gonna put in 32 there and 32 again. And we should see our phase trace flatten right back out. Okay. Now you do notice, I, just to make sure there's no confusion here, you see a little rise in the phase trace uh, in the bottom end. It looks like down below 60 hertz. 
don't be confusing that with uh, maybe I've missed my alignment or anything like that. That's actually a function of the processor design. I'm going to bet it's the equalizer. So if you just take those processes out or those processors out of circuit, you'll see it flatten right out, right? So don't get confused. Probably a good idea to actually have your uh, processors in bypass when you're doing this alignment anyway. Okay. So there you go. Now we've got our two uh, signals aligned here. They're ready to ship off to the master bus. Uh, we can process to our heart's content there without any worry of those signals dropping out of phase. Now, the only real caveat that I find with this, and it's not really a caveat, it's just a, a, a detail that you might want to take care of, is remember now that I've got hi-hat, ride symbol, and overhead going to the master bus, and these two channels now with delay out to 32 samples going to that master bus, in regards to the original time relationship in the drum set, you're off by 32 samples, right? So if you want to be really tweaky about it, like me, uh, you would actually go in and put delay on these three channels, the hat, the ride, and the overhead, and put 32 samples of delay on it to put the drum kit back into its original time reference, okay? Uh, on S3L, you'll have to insert a delay there. On the other consoles, there's delay built into the channel, and you'll be able to add it on there very easily, okay? All right, so that's about it for dual aux returns. This one I really, really like. I use this a lot because, like I said, everything is on the input side. Any of these inputs can address an auxiliary. Maybe you got an auxiliary driving subs or effects processors, etc. It's really easy to do it all and keep it in phase. Uh, that said, please make sure and check out uh, the last little segment that I'm going to do on effects processing because there's some, uh, some time differences that you have to account for there. Otherwise, your effects processor is not going to sound right. Okay? So we got one more to go. I'm going to show you how to do single channel delay compensation where you have uh, a single channel uncompressed, a single channel compressed, maybe for guitar solos or vocals, things like that. Okay, so I'm going to reset here, be back in just a couple minutes, and we'll get on to that last one. All right, thanks. See you. All right, uh, we're back for our last parallel patch scenario here. Uh, this one is just going to involve single channels. Uh, you know, a lot of times what we'll want to do, especially we do it in the studio all the time, where we might have a single compressed channel or lightly compressed channel or maybe even an uncompressed channel. And what we want to add is a severely compressed channel with it in order to get that, uh, that input to sit up and stay, stay placed in the track. Uh, so uh, obviously in analog, this is very simple to do. You know, we just take a direct output from one channel right into another channel and process it, and they're in phase. But here, you know, in digital consoles, we don't have that luxury, right? Anytime we take a direct out channel, uh, direct out of our source channel, anything downstream is going to be late, uh, late arriving. And if we try to add them, to, uh, add them together, it's going to comb filter, right? So we've got to come up with a way to manually compensate that uh, on the console. And again, just to drive home the point, uh, ADC on the consoles will not handle this task. You have to do this manually. So... Uh, here's how we're going to start it out. Uh, I'm, I'm going to describe the process here. It's three channels that we're going to have to put into play for the single channel, right? So here's our source channel. This is guitar and vocal. And we're going to take a direct out of that into what I call a drive channel. And then we're going to take another direct output of that same channel and return it to another channel and have that be the compressed set. All right. Now, the reason we have to do that is so that we can get that original signal aligned to that compression uh, that compressed channel. And we can't do that here. We can't impart that delay here. We have to do it one stage down the line. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and get our noise going. We'll make our patches and we'll, we'll see how this works here. So let's go to our, uh, let's go to our uh, patch bay first and get our noise plugged in. So I'm going to go down to here and turn on the guitar and vocal uh, noise. Uh, whoops and turn it on. So there you see noise coming into our source channel. This would represent the guitar or the vocal. All right. And then we need to go to the patch bay and we need to go to that channel. Whoops. And make sure its direct output is set for post fader. We want this to be post fader. Uh, we want equalization. Any changes we really make on this fader, we want to happen downstream as well. So that if we ever turn this fader down or turn it off, everything downstream of it mutes. Okay. So now how do we get the direct output of this channel into these other two channels? Well, we're going to use the plug-in architecture again to create a bridge. We're going to use uh, the, uh, a time delay plug-in uh, patched from the direct output back and returning to those channels. Okay. So I'm going to use time adjuster again. 
and we're going to do that in a mono fashion here obviously because we're working on mono channels i'm going to copy a version of it here i'm going to take the direct out oops direct out of our source channel our guitar or vocal channel and i'm going to do that for both of these right so they got to have the same oops sorry but nitus here the same drive point uh, meaning direct out of that of that same uh, original channel and then we're going to return that to the two different places we're going to return it to the align drive and we're going to return it to the parallel compression channel and as you can see both channels show up now and they are both post fader of our source channel right so as we turn this down these two go away we could actually turn it up and create more compression downstream if we want to do it all kinds of really cool possibilities there all right, so now let's talk about assignment. Where do I assign these channels? Well, here's the unique part of this, and where it can get a little tricky, and make, you want to make sure to keep your mind around this correctly. So in terms of assignment, we don't really want to assign the source channel anywhere. We don't want it going to any master bus. What we want going to the master buses are the two channels that are downstream of it, okay? So what we're going to want to do is take this channel and not assign it to the left, right, but take the guitar align drive and the parallel compression channel and assign those to your master bus all right so it's still all coming from here it's just getting to the master bus through these two faders all right now once we have that done once we got that path established we can actually kind of get rid of this channel we don't really need it nearby it's just serving as a path for alignment right so uh, we'll actually get rid of that in a few minutes once we get the alignment done now again, like the dual aux scenario, this is actually very powerful uh, on your console because it all happens on the input side. You could actually use the channel strip processing for compression and EQ on your compression channel, right? You don't really want to put any processing on the drive channel that just wants to be a pass-through that is aligned to this channel. So uh, do your normal processing, your normal tone shaping for your rhythm guitar, etc. here, uh, or for your main vocal here, and then do your extreme processing down here for solos or extreme vocal compression down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some plugins on this channel and we'll get to our time alignment procedure. So I've got that here. I'm going to go to plugins and let's put a couple of plugins on this. Uh, maybe we would put something like, uh, you know, let's put something cool on there like 8400. Um, let's insert that on, continue there. Let's insert that on that channel. Press channel and then let's also do maybe what else we want to do in there let's oops. let's do another let's do another EQ maybe let's do a different view there and we'll put that on that channel as well all right so there is our parallel path stream and as you can see in the summed response now on the FFT uh, in the RTA you actually see the comb filtering but again we're back to that scenario where both of these channels are going to both sides of our FFT, so it doesn't appear that there's any difference in the phase trace. So again, we're going to use the pan knob to split these out. So I'm going to split out these two sources, and you can see your comb filtering. It shows the offset now, right? So uh, what we need to do is manually align these things again. So again, it's going to be a process very similar to our uh, dual aux situation. We're going to go to this channel and right-click up here. And it's telling me that there are 51 samples of delay in our compressed channel. So we're going to want to go back to our uncompressed drive channel there and add that delay in. So that is here. What did I say? 51, which I, plus 4 would be the 55. Let's see if I got it right. Yes, I do. And again, you see that little phase tail in the bottom end. If we just take our processors out of play there, that should clean right up. We're not really worried about that. So now you have these two channels in play, in phase, uh, downstream of your primary fader. So once all this is done, now you can kind of get rid of this fader. I, I just take this drive fader and I just move it down, you know, somewhere on a bottom layer somewhere. So now we just have our input source and our heavily processed return, okay? So, you know, for vocals, you know, you might be riding that in and out of there for hard rock stuff where you need, really need a vocal very forward uh, for guitar solos, you know, you could. I, I usually have that thing sitting down maybe minus 20, minus 25, and have this be my rhythm sound. And then once my solo comes, I just turn this up, and now the sound gets, you know, compressed and fat and big and, you know, kind of out of your face, so to speak. 
So the, the additional part of that is that if you want to do effects processing on it, you can drive additional effects processing from the direct output of the return, right? So now I have rhythm sound, now I have wet solo sound, right? So it can work out really, really good. All right, so I hope that makes sense to you. That's the last one of the parallel series we'll talk about. Uh, we'll move on to effects processing and how you deal with that in all these scenarios next. And uh, good mixing to you. Hope you have a good time with all these things. Hope this answered some questions and got your, uh, got your mysteries solved in terms of how to get these things in phase. FFT is your friend. Everybody should have one, all right? Okay, I'm going to reset for the next thing. We'll talk about effects processing next. See you in just a couple minutes. Okay, welcome back for the last segment here. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, effects processing here. I, you know, kind of given uh, the complexity of some of the paths we've created of, of uncompressed signals and compressed signals, these parallel paths, uh, I thought it would be important to at least discuss how do we deal with effects processing for those sources, right? We, we've paid a lot of meticulous attention now to, uh, to ensure that both of our uncompressed and our compressed signals are in phase. Well, we need to really be just that meticulous as well, uh, ensuring that we're feeding effects processors with in-phase signals, right? So uh, I'm probably gonna, you know, the drums is probably a really good example of uh, where we need to do this more often than not. And, you know, kind of the reason I, I explain this in my clinics and my seminars to people, the reason we're trying to do this kind of thing is we're trying to emulate some of these sounds that are created in recordings today, modern recordings today, you know, where we have uh, a lot of, uh, you know, there's room recordings that are heavily, heavily compressed and uh, are added to the drum sound and, and they actually become a big piece of the drum sound. Well, obviously in live sound, we can't, you know, compress down the room sound and get the same effect we get there. So we have to kind of emulate it. And one of the ways to do that is to add both uncompressed and compressed sounds together, send them to a common processor and return it to the channel and add it back in with our normal drums, okay? So that's the one I'm going to show you here today. And the, what I'm going to show you here today also applies to almost all of the parallel scenarios I've shown you in the past uh, or the previous videos, you know, where we might have, uh, you know, inputs that are going directly to a left-right, also going to a group that's going to a uh, left-right. Well, we want to be able to add those two signals together and get them to a processor. Same thing for the dual uh, groups where we have one uncompressed set and one compressed set. Well, we might want to take some input side drums and send those with the compressed group uh, to an effects processor, et cetera. So there, there are lots of places to use this. Uh, so that's what I'm going to show you here. All right, let's get down to it. Let's, uh, uh, let's get our noise turned on here. Uh, all right, so you see your noise coming in. Uh, you know, I've set up another stereo aux uh, on the console to be able to pick up these input sounds. And then we're going to add... Uh, either, you know, probably our compressed subgroup to it. That's probably the best way to show this. Uh, so let's go to the matrix. Remember, a matrix is nothing more, uh, a matrix is nothing more than uh, an output mixer, right? It's going to take different styles of outputs, meaning direct outputs from channels or auxiliaries or groups or even the left, right, the main left, right, if you wanted to do it, and sum those things together down into a mono or a stereo output. So I've got one set up here that we're going to use as the drive to our effects processor. All right, so as you can see, I've got set up for four inputs and that's because I'm gonna put two stereo sources in there. I'm gonna put a stereo aux added with a stereo group. All right, so let's get going here. Here's my, I, I'm gonna have it drive uh, revive. So I'm gonna, that's the auxiliary coming in. And now let's add the group. We want our compressed group. And again, like I mentioned, we want to keep it in stereo here so that it retains all the panning that we put in place on our input side. If you have the bus headroom to do it, you want to keep this in stereo all the way through. All right, so um, let's take a look now. I've got the, uh, we're just going to send our kick snare and toms up to this. That's what we want to kind of get to this effects processor, but it doesn't preclude you from sending other things to it if you want to do it. So uh, there's our kick drum and snare drum noise going in there. Let's put some toms in there as well. And you can kind of see in the summed response right now the comb filtering you're hearing, right? You can hear all that comb filtering in there. But we have a similar thing going on here where I have, I, I've now taken my FFT and patched it to the outputs of the matrix, okay? Uh, so just like we did in the previous examples where that uh, FFT was patched to the left right bus, now I've just, with snapshot change, just changed it over and patched it uh, to the matrix output. And we have a similar thing in play here where. Uh, both the left and right 
uh, of the aux and the left and right of the group are going to the to the common output. So the phase response doesn't show any difference in time because all of the outputs are going to the same place. So we need to use the pan knob again uh, to, in order to separate those out into measurement and reference. So I'm just going to pan the aux to the left and uh, the group to the right, and sure enough, there you see it. You know, now we can see that phase response uh, and uh, try to account for it. Okay. So you're probably asking yourself, okay, well, I've got an aux going into this matrix. How do, how do I manipulate time on that? That's obviously the early arrival. How do I get that, that guy slowed down and get it in time with the group? Well, if we go look at the aux, uh, here's where you can get tripped up a little bit if you really don't know your console super well. And, and believe me, I'm guilty of this as much as anybody. I actually made this mistake in, in uh, the early part of my time with Venue. Even though you see delay on this, re or on this auxiliary send here, that delay does not go up into the matrix. That only goes to the strict bust output uh, for the aux. So we could put delay on here, but it won't impact that signal going to the matrix, all right? Uh, what we have to do is actually do it with a plugin. So we're gonna go to uh, plugins now, and we're gonna uh, establish or instantiate another stereo time adjuster. And we're gonna insert that right on the auxiliary uh, that we're pushing up into that matrix. Right here. And you can see, actually, just with that little bit of delay of inserting the plugin on there, we've actually got a better response going into the, into the reverb, right? So now how do we account for that time? How do we come up with the right amount of time? Well, you know, if you have a, if you can use your delay locator on your, uh, on your uh, FFT and it's sample accurate, it can tell you. Or, you know, at this point, you can really just kind of start throwing in some times and guess until you get the, the flat response. Let's home filter down to about 4K, so I'm going to guess it's probably in, somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 to 10 samples total. Remember in your, uh, this delay plugin, there's a base time of 4 samples, so we're going to have to add to that. Uh, I'm just going to go for it. I'll say 10 is probably going to be around the time memory serves me. And sure enough, there you go. You know, it, that has flattened out that response. So now, if we go back to our uh, matrix. Now we can say with absolute certainty that those two sources are going to be added together in time, uh, in phase, before we send them to the reverb, right? And this is super important because if we don't do this, then you saw the, the, all the gouging in the response. What's going to happen is the sounds that we actually send to the reverb are not going to sound very good, and consequently the reverb isn't going to sound right either. It's going to sound dark and kind of lifeless and just weird and wrong, you know? So uh, we want to really be meticulous and make sure this is right. And... Uh, you know, that again, it's another reason to always have an FFT at your disposal, especially in live sound now and especially with digital consoles, right? I'm a big proponent of it. All right, so let's go ahead and patch in our reverb now. Uh, I've got Revive set up here, and we're just going to take a bus out from that matrix. We're going to take that matrix that we established to do our effects processing and add those two things together and send that right to the reverb. And then we're going to return that to a channel, a stereo channel that we've set up on the console. So now... Uh, we have our drums here, and now we have our effects processing sitting right alongside of it. Now, the only caveat here in the place where you have to kind of be careful is that you don't want to assign this reverb return to the compressed group, nor do you want to turn it up into the aux that is going to that matrix. If you do that, it's going to create a feedback loop, and you won't like that. That won't be very good. So it's just got to assign out of those two areas. Uh, you know, you could assign it to your non-compressed drums group, or you could assign it directly to the left, right. I don't know that I would suggest that if you're using groups, but there you go. All right, so there you go. That's uh, that's going to be your, uh, your kind of effects processing model for some of these parallel situations. Again, you just want to make sure that if you're adding outputs together that they're in phase, right? Okay. Well, I think that's going to be out to do it for this one. Okay, so uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll take you right to the outro now. I'll give you a little, some words of wisdom here going forward. All right, uh, so that kind of about covers it for all of the vignettes here, all of the little video series. I hope this has helped you guys out. I hope I haven't created more trouble and, and more email for me. Uh, but, I, you know, hopefully this will help you out and get you some uh, get you sorted out mentally in terms of what needs to be done to get these signals in phase and then process them uh, properly, okay? Uh, we're going to try to create more videos like this as time allows. 
Uh, you know, obviously my email box is filling up with other things uh, that people are asking about all the time too. So I'm going to try to address some of the most popular of those going forward. So hang in there for more videos uh, from us over here. Uh, take this out and use it. Go slow. Get into virtual sound check. Practice with it a little bit before you take it out on a job site. Uh, you know, you don't want to get out there and be scratching your head. So get good at it before you take it out on the road and use it. And if you're out and, and if I'm out on the road, we're into your town, stop on by and see me. Tell me your story. Let me know how it works for you. Let me know what's going on. All right. We'll catch you on the next set of videos. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.